Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about varicose veins. What are the varicose veins? Varicose veins are abnormally dilated, superficial, tortuous veins produced by prolonged increased intraluminal pressure leading to venous dilation and incompetence of the perforating vein valves. Varicose veins also occur in the presence of degenerated deep fascia. The deep fascia is essential for retaining the muscle pressure and helping the perforating vein to flow the blood from superficial vein to the deep veins. The superficial vein of the lower limb, the great and small saphenous vein and their tributaries are commonly involved because of high venous pressure in those veins. Maybe 10 times more than average vein pressure is in the superficial and, and the, in, in the superficial veins of the leg uh, among the great and small saphenous vein and the tributary specifically when the person is standing for prolonged time. About 10% to 30% adult develop varicose vein. We have multiple predisposing factors like obesity, female sex, pregnancy, prolonged dependent posture like the posture of a teller in a bank or a person standing for long time okay like a surgeon working on the blood vessels deep vein thrombosis genetics it may be autosomal recessive autosomal dominant or it may be multifactorial so there are many predisposing factors okay it may be associated with also deep vein thrombosis clinical features of varicose vein okay visible tortuous vein on the lower limb it may very rarely happen in the upper limb but usually lower limb is the site specifically where there is ball connecting the superficial vein to deep vein or the small saphenous vein opening to the popliteal vein or on the other side we have the great saphenous vein okay on the intermedial side the, the great saphenous vein opening into the femoral vein so in those places there is more chance to get varicose veins there will be dull ache itching burning or cramping of the leg muscles worsening discomfort on standing dermatitis abnormal pigmentation edema or eczema there there may be development of varicose ulcer usually around the ankle this is a non-healing ulcer it keeps the physician to put the patient under a long-term treatment to manage the varicose ulcer preferably in the hospital okay so what are the differential diagnosis of varicose ulcer arterial occlusive disease diabetic complication deep vein thrombophlebitis peripheral neuropathy dermal infection and progressive carcinoma okay so these are the differential diagnosis let us look at the pathogenesis again so this vein will be dilated this is a superficial vein suppose this is the this is the small saphenous vein or lesser saphenous vein this is the valve also have the perforating valve valve perforating vein valve perforating vein is the vein connecting the superficial vein to the deep vein so if this function nice blood flow will go through this also the popliteal vein then to the femoral vein then to the external iliac vein then to the common iliac vein inferior vena cava or it may go through the great saphenous vein then femoral vein 
then go to the external iliac vein, then to the to the inferior vena cava. Okay, so there may be incompetence of the vein valve in the perforating vein valves. Okay, that may happen. If this happen, then blood flow will not be unidirectional. Blood flow may be bidirectional. There will be incompetence, so blood flow will come back in that direction like this. Blood flow is going come back to the superficial vein because we have high pressure in the deep veins. So blood flow move in other direction. So this blood vessel, the vein, suppose this is the small saphenous vein, will be dilated. The same will be also true for the great saphenous vein and its tributaries. So here, varicose vein, because blood cannot go to this pathway blood is just going coming out of the of the deep vein through the perforating vein valve to the superficial vein and it will develop varicosity so this is the pathophysiology this is the differential diagnosis this is a pathophysiology okay so how can we diagnose varicose vein? Diagnosis is mostly clinical, but we study arterial, study the arteries to rule out any arterial insufficiency. But we must know that duplex ultrasound is a gold standard for evaluation of varicose vein. We can identify the exact site of blockage, which deep, which which perforating vein valves are blocked or which other valves in the vein is blocked we can easily assess by duplex ultrasound we can also understand the flow of blood how it is blocked somewhere we can we can manage by the ultrasound duplex ultrasound report treatment we have some non-pharmacological treatment leg elevation and rest graded compression stockings weight loss, dermatologic consultation, okay. So varicose vein produces some problems. So it should be managed by the dermatologist as well as by the vascular surgeon, both. We have modern treatment is sclerotherapy. We inject some medication inside the vein. Also laser therapy, this for modern addition, old time addition like that tying of the valves, stripping of the great and small saphenous venous system as necessary, and valvular reconstruction. Okay. 